All right, I realize these are some uh, pretty crappy drawings that I've got here, but uh, I wanted to kind of go over some of the, just the build of a QCW here. So first I want to say, before I actually made one, I didn't really have a grasp of the overall concept for one, because just for some reason in my mind, I'm thinking there's got to be more to it. There's got to be more to it, you know, and for two, it's like, okay, how exactly does everything come together? Like someone can explain the basics in a modular form, but how do you actually wire it and all that? So I get that part when it actually comes down to it. It is really all it's explained to be. I mean, got a buck circuit and then you've got the Tesla coil. But the difference is this buck circuit, you know, obviously the whole point of it is not simply to just uh, step down a supply voltage. You know, it's ramping the voltage. So, you know, in reality, you have the ramp generator, which is basically feeding the buck circuit and the buck circuit is feeding the Tesla coil. How that all comes together is really not all that complicated. When you start with just the buck itself, right? This is just a common example of what you'll see. You've got a supply, positive, negative, switch, inductor, capacitor, forming your LC filter. You've got an output load resistor. You've got this rectifier right here. So what that actually translates to in more of a drawing, crappy drawing form is, you know, your switch is right here. Uh, so you've got your, this is just crappy toroid, same deal. 5k output resistor except now i've just drawn in the actual mosfet or igbt whatever your semiconductor switch is going to be that's suitable so basically your ramp generator is going to feed into a gate driver whatever whatever you're using and the output of that is going to go right here boom into the uh gate of this switch you know, through some gate resistance or whatever right so one question i've seen actually a couple times is how is that working you know as a high side switch with an end channel switch that was a very confusing thing to me you know like i haven't really i'm not for one i'm no teacher right i don't really know what i'm talking about but at the same time i feel like i might be able to explain what's going on here in a way that makes more sense at least to me your high side switch is simply that it's on the high side relative to the load right your source is not tied to ground your low side switch source is tied to ground and the load is over here on the high side so the load is high the switch is low over here the switch is high the load is low so if you're talking about the switch this is a high side switch this is a low side switch right it's just that simple but the reality of it is is um you know the a lot of the explanations are when you've got an end channel and you're trying to use it as a high side switch then you're going to run into problems because you're going to need a higher gate voltage than your vcc right so i don't really like to me that just doesn't make sense to explain it that way like i get it right for one you've got a max voltage across your gate and source and you've got a max voltage across your drain and source so unless for whatever reason you've just got, you know, a very low rated MOSFET and it's not really a waste, then cool. You know, that this might be a consideration. For what I'm typically doing and everybody else with these circuits, you're throwing a lot of voltage on the drain, right? So obviously when they're talking about you're going to need more voltage on the gate with the high side switch, they're talking about reference to ground. They're not talking about you're going to need more VGS across this fit relative to the drain right i mean if you're throwing if you got a max uh you know drain voltage of 300 volts on a switch well what are you going to do if if the uh, threshold is four volts you know you're going to feed it 12 what are you going to do throw 312 volts across the gate well technically yes reference to ground right but you're not going to put 312 volts across vgs Right, and you're gonna blow it up because VGS absolute max is only gonna be like 20 volts, right? So, I mean, the reality of it is, how does that work anyway? If you're gonna use this common supply, you basically more or less single supply, which means you've got 12 volts here. In this example, let's just say it's a square wave. I'm gonna switch this with a 12 volt square wave. It's gonna see positive 12, zero. That's 12 volts across the gate, reference to ground. But you've got this load here, right? 
So these little dots I've drawn are just the imaginary ground to where the only way this is actually going to see 12 volts is if you put this imaginary ground there. But what happens if you put the ground there? Well, you're just shorting the switch out because it is a high side switch. So you obviously can't have this, uh, this source right here of the switch grounded. It's not going to work. You know, it has to be grounded through the load. That's just the way it works. So really, it's like you need a floating supply. It's just that simple, right? The low side switch does not have this problem because obviously it is tied to ground. So this single rail supply here, you know, you're seeing obviously 12 volts VGS, which just happens to be 12 volts uh, gate to ground. So let's take like a common Tesla coil driver. Let's just say these are two gate driving ICs, right? Positive supply over here that's going to be, let's just say, 15 volts, right? I want to have 15 volts outputting from each of these. So basically what you can see is these are common grounded. They share the same supply and each output is driving transformer primary. So then when you transform that over to these secondary windings, that are driving the gates, you've just automatically got an isolated floating supply here that is positive and negative 15 volts over here, positive negative 15 volts over here you know, with a one to one transformer, right? So there's no concerns there. You know, whatever supply you've got over here, you know, you could just wind whatever to get it over here. So again, in another crappy drawing form, right? This is sort of like how my setup is. Got this big ass capacitance. Positive is right here, negative is right here, draw that crappy. You're just running that positive of this capacitance, which you're feeding however you want. In my case, it's a ZVS driver. You could have a rectifier here, feed it AC, charge it up, whatever. Uh, but you're going straight to the drain of this switch here. In my case, is an IGBT. You can see the source of that is going straight over to this rectifier here, the ultra-fast rectifier 75 amp, which is going this way right the ductor cap and this more or less becomes your output so this is the ground this is the circuit ground of the buck capacitor i mean of the buck converter right here right so this is your negative this is your positive output of the buck and you've got this 5k load resistor across it i'm supplying a switching voltage to this igbt and that basically just means i'm passing the threshold and i'm well into a decent vgs that I can measure across the gate and the source. So basically in my case, just again, crap drawing, just drop using a ZVS driver, got his primary outputting whatever, you know, and I've wound this secondary, which now becomes an isolated supply to give me rectified 250 volts DC or something like that. And that's what's going over and charging the big ass cat. You know, I mean, I've got a, you know, the push button deal to do that, right? Just to sort of save power. Right, so again, what it boils down to, right, is just, you know, anything can become a floating ground, more or less, right? But that's what you need. So instead of this imaginary deal here, where you're basically just trying to use this single supply, you're basically just going to go like this right here. All this basically represents is, now you've got 12 volts VGS with that reference with this supply here when you're talking about 12 volts derived uh to ground over here you don't actually have it across vgs because this ground here you know needs to go through the load here you know or if you ignore this imaginary line here so if you're going through the load you've got a voltage drop so i mean it's just it, it all depends Really, you know, of, of the uh, voltage drop of your switch, you know, RDS and the load and all that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just like, look, it's where you're referencing the voltage from. So, basically, if you were to use um, just this common ground here and you want to actually make sure that you've got 12 volts VGS, then you can't use 12 volts reference to ground. It just needs to be higher than that to account for the drop, right? So, really, at the end of the day, so long as you can supply the gate and the source of your fit with the proper VGS, that's all you need to worry about.
Now, you know, I'm not going to say all you need to worry about, but I mean, that's as far as when it comes to switching, cool. You know, you want an opto isolator or something, you know, is obviously recommended. Uh, but hell, I did my first testing without any of that. All right, so then we can actually look at a actual legitimate circuit. You know, this is a uh, lownotions.com driver. So this is async buck driver. It says it's experimental, you know, seems to work. But you've got, bam, low side gate driver, high side switch. You can see there's really nothing magical there. He's got TVS diodes, protection across the gate, 5 ohm gate resistor, bing, bang, boom. All right, so just to sort of drive that whole concept home with this basic example, given the whole, you know, explanation of, you know, hey, you need your uh, gate voltage be, to be higher um, with an end channel on the high side than your supply voltage over here. So let's take this example. You know, we're going to have 24 volts. It's going to be feeding this high side switch. You've got a resistive load here on the ground. So you've got 24 volts here. 24 volts reference to ground. That's what you're going to be trying to feed this load. Then over here, you've got a signal generator that's going to supply a 5 volt square wave to switch this on. All right, let's just say in this basic form, this will work. You know, we don't need anything else. Is this going to switch if it's an end channel switch on the high side? And you've only got five volts going to the gate, but meanwhile you've all you've got this 24 volts, you know, on the drain here. I mean, yes, it's going to switch because let's just say the threshold, which might be a common voltage, is going to be like four volts. So five volts is going to switch this on. It's not going to push a lot of current. We're just you know trying to get it to switch past the threshold, and that's what's going to happen because you're feeding it five volts. You know, and the threshold is four volts. Uh, if you give it a more suitable gate voltage, you know, 12, you know, 15, whatever, then you're actually going to be able to pass real current, but it's still going to switch, right? So does you know? So let's just say I have 12 volts over here. Then yeah, it's going to switch very nicely, and you're going to be able to power this load very nicely. The reason that will be is because you're going to have at least five volts, preferably 12 across VGS, which means if you put a multimeter across your gate and your source right here, you're going to have 12 volts that you're feeding it, or, you know, or 5 volts. The whole idea is, again, this is not going to work if this is not drawn this way, but you simply are just saying, okay, 24 volts on the drain, I'm going to power this, but then I'm going to switch the gate at 5 volts. If you just say that, well, I guess it's assumed that you've got this 5 volts reference to ground and again if that's how you're deriving your five volts to switch the gate it's not going to work because five volts to ground over here is not going to be five volts vgs